Well, today I'm with Michael Green, head of Handelsbank in Sweden, to discuss the bank's dedication to customer service and the other features which make the bank so unique. Welcome. Nice to have you with me. Thank you so much. Let, let's start with the second quarter results, which have been described by some as the bank's best ever set of quarterly results. What would you say, Michael, are some of the key factors that have contributed to such a great performance recently? Yeah, first of all, I'd, uh, I'd like to say that we've been able to, um, to deliver quarterly results very stable throughout all of the financial crisis. So this is just another quarter uh, in, in, that, in that mode, if you wish. I'd say the, 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 answer is li the answer lies into the, the way we do our business, the way our business model works. Um, I mean by that, that we have a total dedication within our branches, with our branch network, to take decisions locally and to choose which customer they want to bank with. And by doing that, you know, for many, many years, we have uh, created very skilled people out there managing their own business locally. Uh, but if you look into the, the second quarter uh, in detail, you, you'll see that we've been able to, despite the, uh, the, low, um, the lowering uh, rates in Sweden, which is actually on the negative side right now, We've been able to offset that uh, with higher lending volumes in the bank, mainly throughout outside of Sweden. And we had a pretty good year in terms of net fee income. And if you look into the fee income side, it's mainly driven by the asset management side, where we had uh, a lot of success actually the, the, couple of, the last couple of years, sorry, uh, with that we take market shares in a pretty good way right now. And that shows in the numbers. Thinking you know, in, in kind of detail of those numbers, 2014 was quite challenging, uh, operating profit, net interest, income, both falling by 3% during the year. Right. The first half of 2015 has delivered something of a recovery with operating profit rising by 7% compared to the mid-years in 2014. What, what's been the main driver of that turnaround? Well, what happens in the bank when you get pressure on the income side, uh, due, driven uh, uh, through the uh, net interest income, what happens is that the local branch manager seek other alternatives and other businesses that he or she wants to drive. And what happened last year and, and this year is that you, you kind of shift a little bit from, from the, the loan side to work with the savings side. And by doing that, you focus on the savings and the customers and we've been able to really, really do that in a good way. Secondly, what happens is if, if your income is, is, uh, has a lot of pressure, you obviously you have to take care of your cost side. So the branch managers together with our staff work very closely and very, very sharp actually by being a little bit more efficient you know, as they go along. So it's, it's focus on saving side and the, uh, the cost side. And if you look at the saving side, I, I'm, I'm just a little bit proud uh, of the, uh, the result we see in our mutual uh, funds that we have had uh, um, uh, net flows last year of over 26% 20 of the market. And we have a normal market share of roughly around 11. So that's a good thing. So focus on alternative income and cost side. That's what happens. But in the introduction, I, I talked about the kind of levels of customer satisfaction. And that lies at the heart of the bank's ethos in many ways. Would you say this focus on customer service is the principal reason why profitability has been consistently above its peers? I think in any corporate business you have to focus on customers, right? Customer and customer satisfaction, that is on top of everyone's mind. But of course it's not that easy, not as simple as that. You need to be efficient in the way that you deliver service and products to our customers. And I think we've been able to do that. But as I said, focus on customers, customers' needs and customer uh, satisfaction. And you've already mentioned, Michael, this kind of uh, autonomy that individual branch managers have. Mm. And, and that decentralized approach which Handel's Bank and takes towards customer service, how, how easy is it to actually monitor the individual branches' performance to ensure that they are delivering those results. It's actually pretty easy. We we tend to do it very, in a very easy easy way. Sorry, we measure branches just by the cost income ratio. We can also um, measure the how satisfied the the different branches customers are. So I think it's very easy actually. We tend to do it as easy as we can because you can always do a lot of fancy things in kind of how you monitor and how you follow the branches. And I think that's not really 
doing any anything for us. So we tr try to keep it very very simple. Another feature of the bank is um, Handelsbank is well known for consistently refusing to take any offers of government assistance, even in the aftermath of the global financial crisis. What's the reasoning behind adopting such a staunch policy? It's our belief that a bank should cater for its own needs and not be a burden for taxpayers. Uh, and we recognize and we understand that getting uh, cheap funding, short-term uh, funding from central banks, uh, could be a have a positive Im impact on the P&L. But I don't think that that drives value creation over time. You took over the, um, the kind of role of head of Handelsbank and SE this year. Um, prior to that, you were head of the capital markets operation, right. a position you've held since 2011. In terms of your responsibilities, has there been much overlap between those two roles for you? I wouldn't say overlap. I think, though, that you know, being able and have the, the uh, possibility to move around in an organization is, is often a very good thing because you, you learn a lot about the different angles of, of your organization and what really drives different areas. And you get a good sense of the product range and how things work. So I think you know, getting the chance to move around a little bit is actually very, very good. And are there any lessons from your previous role that you've kind of brought to bear in terms of your new role? When I worked in the investment banking area and the asset management area, uh, obviously they're very focused on activity. So. Uh, they, they need to, you know, when you wake up the morn in the morning, you need to do a lot of transactions to really uh, get the income. I think I could pr I'll probably take a little bit of that with me into, into my new position, uh, working with the branch network, activity, focus, and, and work with the customers. And one of the things we always have to touch on is the kind of impact of um, technology, banking technology. Mm. Um, has that changed the way you approach delivering customer satisfaction? When we ask the customers how they like and, and take care, take um, part of our um, digital platforms, and uh, they are very, very happy with the how that works. <coughs> we have the, the the branch as the hub, but we extend that by by delivering platforms like the smartphones and the internet for the for the customers to really take take action and do their banking whenever they like to do it. And I think that actually is a, is a greater service uh, and a more availability for the customers to do business with the banks. I think that provides an even higher customer satisfaction going forward. Now, uh, I've talked about um, some of the other features that make the bank quite distinctive, and one of those is the principle of not paying workers bonuses, but mm -hmm. rewarding them by um, a share of profits through Octagonen, the foundation, right. which owns portion of handle ban handles bank and shares. Mm. Now, they can't access that until they turn 60. Right. So in a bonus-dominated culture like banking, how difficult is it to retain employees for the long term when other banks could potentially say, actually, join us, we'll give you a bonus straight away, it's more lucrative and it's more immediate. How mm. does that work? Works very well, actually. And I, <coughs> uh, when I talked to the uh, the new employees that we got on, uh, that got on board to with Handelsbank, and I, I uh, recognize that nowadays, even more than 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 before, they uh, they value corporate culture very very highly. And when we talk about the the the, the belief in the people working with the Handelsbank and the right to make decisions, the, the right to be part of the development in the local branches and not pay in bonuses and not be a burden to society in general, I think that's very, it's very good for the, for, for the people coming out from the universities to really adopt to that. So I think, you know, corporates with, with strong cultural values are going to be winners in terms of, of recruiting uh, new staff. I don't see that a problem at all for us. Okay. Um, now, to date, you've also uh, resisted the kind of call center approach to customer service, which many, many of your competitors have already deployed. How important has it been for the overall effectiveness of the bank for customers to have that direct link to their bank managers or, or more qualified members of the bank's staff in order to receive assistance? Mm. Listen to customers, they're very happy when they get things solved, it, when they call their, their contact within the branch and all that. And that's, I think that's a very efficient way of, of dealing with customer problems or, or things that need to be, to be done. 
But on the other hand, of course, we uh, in, in Sweden at least, we have had 24-7 um, uh, um, service for customers when we're not you know, staffed in branches, you know, weekends or and, and nights and so on. So I think that's uh, that's just a help for for the brands to 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 get the peop to get the, sorry the customers to contact us and, and get the service they need. But prior pri the primary way of solving our customers' needs are within the branches, and I think that's pretty effective for us at least. Now, thinking about the kind of broader society, how important is corporate social responsibility to Handelsbank, and and uh, what are some of the initiatives that uh, that you've been involved with recently? Well, working with CSR issues and be a, a good part of the society is, lies very deeply into our corporate culture. We try to uh, manage on our own. We do not pay any bonuses for, for our staff and, and senior manage management. We, uh, the direct impact on, on the environment for a bank is not that high, but we try to do our small things in terms of be efficient uh, and also in, uh, try to buy for example, green e electricity for our branches, as small things that we can do. But we also need to be aware of and work very closely with our corporate customers and understand their impact on the environment and try to, to, to um, uh, work together with them to develop their businesses because there, there is a change. If you are good at that, you have a, can have a good uh, prospect going forward and if, you're not, if you do not work uh, hard on the environment side, I think that you take a lot of risk. So then we work very closely together with our, com our corporate customers to, to manage that. Talking about the kind of the society, the community that uh, the bank operates in, you are, in fact, you have over 460 branches mm. throughout Sweden. As head of the operation, uh, do you ensure that each and every branch in the country is given your attention? If so, how on earth do you go about overseeing such a, a, an extended network? I think the, uh, the attention that the staff needs is not from me actually, it's from their branch managers and the customers. That's how it works. I, I try to visit as many branches as I can to, to really talk to, to the, the staff meeting customers and get input on product things and what they think should be, um, uh, could be done better in the bank and so on and so forth. But I mean, in general, they are very um, autonomic, if that's the word you can use, mm. uh, in terms of taking care of themselves in the local market. And the attention should be from the manager and the customers. We've mentioned the kind of global financial crisis, um, and Handelsbank can manage to emerge from that relatively unscathed, um, especially when compared to other European uh, banking giants. How did that, how did that happen? Well, first of all, I think we're very, we have a very conservative way of looking at risks. We, we, don't, we don't like market risks. We don't like uh, liquidity risks. We don't like macro risks. So we tend to like, uh, sorry, we're not tend, we like to take credit risk. So by uh, minimizing the, the market risks in general and, and creating a stable, very stable foundation in terms of our balance sheet, we get a good way of funding ourselves, a cheap way of funding ourselves, and we, in, we are not getting that volatile. But we also are very um, focused on getting the right customers on board because we are as good as our customers. Finally, um, you're now head of Handelsbank in Sweden. What goals do you hope to achieve in that role? Uh, actually, you know, we, when we talk about Handelsbanken in Sweden, uh, the goal is that every branch, they have their own goals and, and that accumulates to a goal for Sweden. But in general, I say that since we're a big part of the bank, we, we, uh, my goal is actually to, to, to be uh, um, contributing to the bank's overall goal, which is to, be, to have a higher return on equity than the average of our peers because that's, we need to do that in Sweden, obviously, being such a, part, a big part of the bank. But also to uh, obviously have more customers on board and more satisfied customers. And why not open a few branches more? Michael Green, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you.